I wanted to say that how important it is for our for our attitude when we come up on stage. Um, when we approach worship, it, it's really it's really easy for us to walk up on stage and perform and walk back off and, and feel no different, really. Um, I think it's really important that we, we take a step back and just remember why we're there in the first place. Um, we really need to remember that it's all about Jesus. We need to, we need to stop and we just need to center ourselves around the, um, the true reason why we're up there performing. Um, also, if you find yourself worried or nervous, so just, just remember that... Um, all the music's the same to God. It doesn't. It doesn't matter if it doesn't matter if someone's making a mistake on the other side of the stage, and that's all you can think about. Or it doesn't matter if you, you maybe play the wrong chord for a bit of it. It's. I mean, it's all the same to Jesus. Part of performing. It's. Yeah, it's all the same to Him. It's all worship. Um, I have one of my favorite verses here from the Bible about worship. It's from John four, John chapter four, verse twenty four. It says, God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Um, which I think really, really kind of cuts straight to the point when it comes to our worshiping God. Really kind of reiterates the importance of not just performing it, but bringing it right back to the heart of worship as well. Um, in spirit and in truth, not just awesome bass lines. <laughs> yeah. um, I can I can certainly relate to this on a personal level for me performing. Um, I started playing bass before I got into before I became a Christian. Um, was back in high school, um, which really wasn't that long ago for me. But I um, started playing bass and got on board um, with the with the worship team at my school, who wanted me to who wanted me to play along. And um, it sort of started from there. I went went out of school into. Uh, into a couple of churches and started playing and um, we went to the same high school together and a couple of our mates we put a band together um, so we really enjoy doing a bit of that as well um, it's really great um, but back to back to worshiping for the right reasons like um, one thing that I find that really helps me which I'm sure is a bit of a no-brainer is to really really you know just pray before you go up on stage mm. and really just you know, commit the whole thing to God. That's the brothers mean. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and that's that's yeah, that's really really important. I find. You never realize how big of a difference it can yeah. make because sometimes you go into pr like, sure. Because we play on a Sunday, we practice Sunday afternoon, and yeah. sometimes you go in without praying, and then practice is just all over the place. Like you're still all there, but it's just not working, and yeah. then you just go stop. You just describe us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> definitely, definitely. Yeah, like you just you, like a lot of the yeah. time you just go stop, put down your instruments, sit down. And sort of just, you know, mm. get into the right mindset, I think, before yeah. you can physically do the... Yeah, very important. So we want the same issues, do we? <laughs> <laughs> I think so. I think yeah, it's pretty widespread. It's quite common. Yeah. Have you guys ever been a part of a band where you just want to tell someone else what to do? Has, has that ever been a part of an Not experience? Here. Not here? <laughs> no? Well, we usually know our job when we walk in here. But yeah. no, out, outside bands, oh yeah, that's the reason why they bust it up, isn't it? Yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> you literally want to get it out in the open and... Mm. You know, either become the best of friends or worst of enemies. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I reckon there's there's definitely a very fine line between contributing to someone musically and um, just being being a bit of a bit of a bit of an ass about it, really. Um, like I, I found myself sometimes, you know, thinking, "Gee, he's playing the wrong chord," or you know, "He's in the wrong time signature," or "What is he doing there?" And and I really got I got to I got to stop myself and just remember that, you know, it's. Like it's great that they're up there doing it, and it's it's not my it's not my part to go over there and like I can I can give them a bit of advice, but it's not my part to shouldn't be frustrated, shouldn't be anything like that towards them because they're just worshiping God, you know. That's right. And that's that's why we're all here anyway. That's why we're all here. Um, but I reckon we might we might crack into just a bit of practicalities. Um, a few things that I've found really help me playing bass in a in a worship and praise scenario. Um, the first thing that I wanted to talk about is overplaying. <laughs> and um, what, what I mean by overplaying is we we very often, um, well not very often, but what, it, can happen, like it can happen where <laughs> you walk into a band and um, I've found, I've seen a lot of bass players who they they 
they know they're really good players. They're, they're fantastic bass players, but um, they'll be they'll be jamming out on I don't know, like how great is our god or or one of the classics, and um, the whole thing's a bass solo for them. And um, I think I think it's really really important that we we play to suit the song that we're that we're accompanying. Um, bands work because everyone is accompanying one another. And musically, it's it's not about hey, there's a gap for me to do a bass solo, or hey, there's a gap for me to do a guitar solo. It's really about, hey, here's a gap for me to think about what I want to play and leave it as a gap, because your song needs gaps, obviously. The, the bits where you don't play are, are just as important as the bits where you do play, because a song that cruises along at one level, I find, is not as engaging as a song that kind of, you know, has its, has its darker bits, has its lighter bits. Um, definitely important for dynamics. Um, I'll, give you, I'll give you a quick example of what I mean by overplaying. I'll just get Howie to have a crack on, I don't know, How Great Is Our God or something along those lines. And, um... Yeah, he's good. I'm gonna make a G. We'll do it in G. So you just, just have a crack at it. Um, I'll, I'll do what I think. I think it's overplayed. Um, then I'll show you what I probably would play over an acoustic guitar version of How Great Is Our God. So, So, um, just, just a little bit. Just a little bit overplayed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so we would only do less than half that. Yeah. Yeah. So what what I'd probably play, um, I just hang around on root notes. So you know, if we're on the C, from the G, if we're on the D, if we're on the E minor. To uh, you know, kind of accompany everyone else. Um, the whole song definitely doesn't need to be a bass solo. That's right. That's what Black wants too. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Just got, we've got to blend, haven't we? You know. Yeah, for sure. But yeah, on, when you get your chance, and <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I'm, I'm not, um, I'm not, I'm not denying the opportunities. <laughs> well, to no, put it in a couple we of times. Yeah. Yeah. Stuff like that. But if we do, you know, that is Marcus's job. And like yeah. the bass players, we're always with the drummer. Definitely. And go from there, so yeah. you can go from there, but um, what you call them, but yeah, yeah, us two boys like to swing every so often. Yeah, yeah. You know? And we don't get enough time to do it. What, what's, what's, <laughs> what's what swing? swing? Just to clarify, what's swing? swing. What swing? Swing. Swing. Yeah, jazz swing, stuff like yeah. that. 12 bar sort of thing. Oh, so when you go 12 bar, no 11 bar? <laughs> no, no, no 11 bar. Probably 12 bar. Yeah. <laughs> but just, but just, it just, you know what swing is? Man, I'm the only one. The only one? I'm the only one. They're not 12 bars. 12 bar? Mm. 12, 12 bar, bar please. You don't know what 12 bar is? No. Nah. Like, He's oh not a muser! Mate, <laughs> 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 I'm asking the genuine question here, man. Okay. 12, 12, 12 bar blues. 12 it's bar just, blues. That's standard old rock school. stuff, yeah. isn't it? Three chords, mm -hmm. yeah. maybe a minor if you're lucky. But if it, yeah, yeah. that's a 12 bar blue. Yeah. But that's 12 bar blues. Okay, right nice. Sometime, no. You can write every song we, 12 bar blues. We, we, I throw it in, and sometimes you look at me and go, no, I'm going, yeah. <laughs> right. Now I, now I know what it's called, and I'll just be like, no it's 12. A, yeah, <laughs> no 12. It's, but, it's but, a but, staple. That's it's right. Staple. I'll, I'll, I'll put it in. It, it, it fits into more songs than you realise, but the same token, yes, I know I'm not trying to take away from the way the song's written in the first place. Mm. But every so often you get one of those songs, I might drop in a, a reverse, 
version of it in. Oh, a bit of reverse roll bar. Nah. Yeah. 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 And play it really slow, but still in time with the drum. Oh, definitely, yeah. But it, yeah. But it, it makes it stand out. Yeah. Because yeah, it, it sure. really is a good accompaniment, yeah. Yeah, well, um, I sort of, sort of covered dynamics a bit there. Um, I was thinking I might talk a bit about... Do you guys play with a pick or, or finger no. style? Finger style. <laughs> What's that? That's a rude word, but that's... <laughs> yeah. That's what picks mean. So, some people like them. Some people like them. Um, uh, I gave those up 20 odd years ago. Yeah. yeah, yeah. When I first started playing bass, I used to use like one of those thumb picks, you know, uh, yeah. your thumb. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I've seen those before. Yeah. Yeah. My arm just used to hurt from doing that. That's it? Yeah. Yeah. That's it. I've mm. just gone, nah, it's got to be an easy way to do this. Yeah, there's definitely and I found that I had other fingers. <laughs> Depends what tone you're after as well, but I'll probably, I might go into that a little bit later. What strings um, you use there? you got to have a lesson tonight. You thought you were going to come here to teach us something. These you're, are, getting, you're going out of here with a lesson too, I can tell you. These are um, the Dario Pro Steels. They're not coated, they're just round wounds. Um, so I think they're kind of the, the middle ground middle ground for string tone. Do you like roto sounds? Sorry? Do you like roto sounds? Roto. Mm. I don't know what you're on about. No, okay. Roto. So you're a step up again. Okay. But if you but if you want a real bass string, yeah, it's what's on here. What do you have? Made in Vienna. Yeah. By the pros that make V violin strings. Okay. <laughs> okay. Tomastic Enfeld. Yeah. Heard of them? Nope. Uh, retail here for two hundred fifty dollars a set. Wow. <laughs> Wow. Yeah, that's why I haven't heard of them. Yeah, yeah that's why I haven't heard of them. Yeah. <laughs> you don't have I don't the pay grade. Right. Right. Yeah. I might pay more than 50 bucks a set for them. And that's I was yeah. one of them. Yeah. But when I when I made this, I Good. wanted something different. Yeah, yeah, gotcha. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, so strumming pattern, well, not, it's not so much strumming, but finger picking patterns. Mm. Um, I, hear, I hear a lot of people, well, I wouldn't say a lot of people, but um, you hear a lot of... Try and try and try and cut back on the taps. I've never heard you do that, yeah. no, haven't you? I don't know. The sound guy won't like it. <laughs> I don't know. The sound guy won't like it, and, and then the drum won't be done. one either. Yeah, um, I, I, I try and stay away from it unless um, <coughs> unless, I don't know, unless the that. situation calls heard. for it. But for the most part, in praise and worship music, um, if you're the bass player, avoid um, avoid the old taps. Mm. Um, probably probably doesn't suit the most. Um, I mean, obviously, it is it is a style thing. It is definitely a style. Depends thing. what kind of song yeah. you play. Yeah, that too. would yeah. actually that would probably work in a cabaret. Oh, it's a cabaret, you know, the, the old time going back in the seventies, you, 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 you get yeah, a, you get Mac away song. with that. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But it's not it's not the style. Yeah, that I'm, we play yeah, I'm sort of narrowing this right down here yeah. to, to praise and worship music. Mm. Um, <clears throat> the, a general rule that I go by is the less the drummer's playing. The less you should play as, right. as a bass guitarist. Mm, sure. um, I find that if if, if you're just sitting at the intro of a song or you know somewhere on a quiet verse, then you, you probably don't want to be going <laughs> because it's like, hey, look at me, I'm the bass player, and it, it probably doesn't probably doesn't add a lot to the dynamics of the song either. Um, it's 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 a really safe bet that A sounds good and B. Is dynamically good to when when things are when things are low down. If you want to play, just keep it on a root note and just hang out there for the length of the chord, and then just you know meet your next note right up where it's supposed to be, and so on and so forth. You can you can add in a bit of a bit of you know, well walk a note in between or something like that, um, depending on if the song calls for it. Like if I'm going from a G to a C, I might might hit up a. B, which is a oh, note yeah, that's yeah, in yeah. the it, in the chord of G, yeah. um, which will work as a bass line. It that's, won't, that's won't sound your, gross. That's that's part of your of your blues progression too. Yeah, definitely, mm. definitely. Yeah, yeah. It's um, it all stems. See, Blake's from blues. getting a lesson tonight too. He thought he was coming to Sydney, not something. You're getting a lesson too. Yeah. Then. Oh yeah. no, I come to these things just to get blown away. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have no idea, and I'm just like, oh. To, right. to any of me, that's that's just basic stuff 101. Oh, it yeah. definitely yeah. is. Yeah. 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 Um, I, li I like what you said, dude. Um, you're just saying hold a root note. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. And then meet your next one. Yeah. Um, instead of strumming through it, I guess, when you're saying when the, the band is down. Yeah, yeah. Because um, 
I mean, as in, you guys might have been doing that, I don't know. But, like, I've never known what to communicate, like, you know, hey, yeah, what's, yeah, yeah, what's, yeah. what can I ask, you know, for you guys to do? It's, all, it's so also that, a feel thing, you know. It, it, it's a feel of life. We, we would practice on Sunday morning for poor church time. It was absolutely rubbish. Yeah, right. I couldn't, I couldn't get anything going with the drummer. Yeah. You've got to get along really well with the drummer as a bass <laughs> but, guitarist. But, and yet after prayer time, we come back, even though we had prayer time beforehand, hmm. I, just, I just couldn't do anything. But you come back after prayer time and it was a whole different kettle of fish yeah. because even that thing drops out. Yeah. And I've got no idea what any singing. Yeah. And I'm just, I'm just trying to listen to the front of the house and work out what's going on, yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. You know, you think it's amazing what drops in and out, and you've got to get back to 101 yeah. mm. to yeah. really listen. If you've got to drop out from, well, what, backing vocals or something as I do, yeah. Yeah. Pop that, mm, 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 yeah. come back, yeah. take a listen, listen to up there, because we never had fold back when I was growing up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Fold back to me is a thing of the um, mid luxury. 70s, I think. Yeah, it's luxury. <laughs> yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. Yeah. We never had it. You listen to the front it's, it's of the house. And staple diet for me, mate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My generation staple yeah, diet. Yeah, fold back is staple diet. Taught yeah. you how yeah. to listen. Yeah, yeah. Really yeah. listen intently. Yeah. Like every week, I'm listening to everybody around yeah. me. Yeah, oh, you got to do it. You you know, I'm not just listening mm-hmm. to the drummer. I'm yeah. also listening, if, if Marcus puts some great licks down, I want to know what, what he's playing, what yeah. can come back at me. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. All, so don't go stand on his territory. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. That's, that's a really that's important so. thing, don't go stand on people's territory. That's right. That's but the other thing is, uh, what you call me, if, oh, I don't know how this works sometimes, because we never get the work in the surface. You can walk in here, muck around, get the most fantastic groove going you want, and, you, and 10 minutes later, you, re- you can duplicate it. No one in nope. the world. It's yeah. gone yeah. for life. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you gotta record that stuff. Someone's gonna hit record quick or something. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It kills you, doesn't it? Yeah. You have why the comrade guys that get listen this is this good stuff, but we've lost it. Yeah. 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 yeah, another thing another thing I found um back when I was first starting to play worship music is um the well kick drum is is very much gonna dictate yep. what pattern you're playing. Mm-hmm. Um like you might sit on the same note but where the kick drum's placed is is strongly going to dictate where where you're going to play. Like you might be singing on a verse, and if your drum is going like, you know, a bit more rhythmically, That's rhythmically right, just straight forward, like yeah, you yeah, can yeah. just you know like groove along yeah. with him yeah. on the right. kick drum. But um, it's it's really easy for bass to become distracting when it's mm. when it's played too much. Um, I wouldn't. I, I I can't remember the last time that I played fast, very fast when when it comes to praise and worship music, mm. um, because it's it's it doesn't sit, it doesn't really work that well. I mean, there's there's been times in 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 fast in faster praise songs. You you mean like doubling up on your time and playing bass or something? Yeah. So if I'm if I'm on if I'm on G, yeah. and this is like quiet verse, and I'm just you know doing every every bar or so. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Then I could I could play that, but I I wouldn't go anywhere near doing like wouldn't do that. No 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 no. That's what I mean by playing too fast. Yeah. I mean the the drive the driving rocks. Yeah yeah. It's it's got it's got its place. That's right. Yeah definitely. Eddie, you you were going to say something, bro? I was just going to say I I sometimes wonder if that's. That's why the, it gets a little bit out of control on stage here sometimes, is because we've all got fallbacks. Mm. We all can hear the sound that we want to hear, mm. and then we end up playing above the sound that we want to hear because you know we can play loud. I've got it, mm. yeah. and you know, we kind of didn't have that luxury. Mm-hmm. You had to play just enough to be able to hear yourself, but you still had to be able to play, hear everybody else. Yeah, you, you yeah. know what I mean. And yeah. so it's kind of. We didn't have that luxury of just smashing out something up here yeah. and, and making a lot of noise. Which yeah. Sometimes. That's that's so true, I guess, because what we have, we've got three fallbacks. Essentially, yeah. we've got three different worlds yeah. going just, on yeah, on the you stage. Get what you want Definitely, to hear. yeah. Because um, we, at, back at our church, we share a fallback. And it's hard sometimes to ask the Fine. sound guy for more of me. Because that's what I want to hear, and then yeah. I forget. Yeah. 
yeah. that Murray's, you know, yeah, listening to yeah. the same thing, and I try and outdo myself. Yeah, definitely. Mm. But poor old Murray here is like, yeah, I'm like, where's, where's bass gone? You know, yeah. <laughs> how big's your stage? his ears because it's too much. How big's yeah. our stage? Mm. It's probably um, about three quarters of width of this one, and a bit, and a bit deeper. But we um, at the same area. Yeah, probably, My biggest yeah. problem I always have with stages is big, and I've always been a thing for it, like. Play at the Stradbroke Island Hotel one Saturday night. Mm. I'm not kidding. The stage, you put the drummer on stage. And we got no room, no room left. <laughs> this is what I play all night. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because that's the edge of the stage right there. I am used to having the drummer, and you have everything jacked up to him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right? yeah. It didn't, and it didn't matter if we went into a big hall, mm. uh, like an old picture theatre hall, something like that. Did the same thing. He wants to hear it. Yeah. Put it next to him. That sort of thing, and we go from there. I, sometimes I find here we're spread out too far. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, it really, I like to have had the, the closeness of it. The intimacy yeah. is nice. Cause, yeah. Because when we play yeah. uh, for our youth groups, we, every third week we have a thing called Encounter. Yeah. Because it's like 40 minutes to just hang out, and then there's band, yeah. and then a message. Yep. Yeah. And then just do what you want. And yeah. the kids, even though it's a biggish kind of stage, yeah. if you're really close Coming up, in, yeah. you know, Definitely. compared to playing in a bigger like, place, yeah. You don't get that same connection as if you're playing right in their face and they're right there. You can get into it more, I guess. Because mm. mm. Murray and myself are a bit more expressive in our playing. Playing. Yeah. Yeah. To... That's, that's right, too. Like, the, the other thing is, like, your, your amps, it doesn't matter about where your amps are. I mean, I, I, if you want them up there, put them up next to him or else. I've got a 10 minute lead. Yeah. I can walk over all the stage, no trouble at all. Yeah, yeah. And like, when I was playing the bands, I, I did that all night long. I just walk yeah. up the stream of the ends and. I just have a listen, see the audience is doing, say hello to them. Mm. Yeah. Then, then you walk back, sing your part and stuff like that, what yeah. you had to do and stuff yeah. like that. That's yeah. what I'm used to. Yeah. Mm. You know? no, it's, it's, it's definitely good when it, come, when it comes to the... Because um, you, you can very easily look bored when you're playing instruments mm. on stage. Yeah. Um, it's when, when it comes to, you know, looking engaged with the, with the music, which in the end helps to engage the congregation mm. with what you're playing. Um, moving around, staying mobile is is good. Like even if even if it's just you know like like moving around a bit like this, or you know tapping a foot, or anything like that, just like bopping your head or yeah, grooving out right. and smiling. Yeah. Like smiling is such a big yeah. thing. Smiling yeah. is a if huge one. Someone could be staying stationary and That's just grinning. Sing up front. And, <laughs> and like they can smiler. they can look like they're enjoying it and it's get it's engaging and it's it's, yeah, yeah. it's great. But if if you if you look depressed up on the stage. And it's going to translate to people that are looking at you and watching you yeah. perform. They're like, oh, what's he doing up there? It doesn't look like he's enjoying himself or anything like that. Um, yeah, and I was just, I was just wanted to cover a bit on improvisation, um, which is, it's definitely what well, you, you do end up doing a fair bit of it um, in, in worship music because you're often only given chords, and you, you'll know the song, you know it rhythmically, mm. and you know where the chord changes are, but. It's Obviously, like, there's no there's no bass line written down on the page. Not, it's not like lead guitar where there's licks you can play in between. Yeah, You've exactly. got to make it up on bass. Yeah. Well, the funny thing is about that sort of stuff. I played for a long time where you were given the bass lines. Yeah, right. Yeah. And you were in trouble if you played outside of them. Okay. Mm. Yeah. So <laughs> because it was there in your music, you yeah. knew exactly where you, what you had to do. If you mm. play that side, but uh, uh. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. definitely. Like I it's find very good discipline that way too. You know. Yeah. I find that um, through, through improvisation, um, it, it can even be a personal way of, for, of, of worshipping God yourself. Yeah. Like, mm. that he just brings the power for you to do that sort of thing as well. Mm. Um, but, like, if you, you want to hang out like a G, I'm sure you fellas know this sort of stuff, um, but just to go over it real quickly, um, my favourite key is G, <laughs> but I could definitely play a G over a G and we'll be, we'll be happy days for a long time. Look what else is in the chord of G, so I mean, you can, you can hang out on a B, but you probably wouldn't want to sit there for too long, um, because that's the major third in the chord, but you can, you can hang out on a D, you probably wouldn't want to sit there for too long, until you get back to a G, so you can just chuck it into the bass line, and it's, it's good, but you don't really want to sit on it for too long. Another good one is changing octaves of the rune note on the chord you're currently on, so if I'm on a G, and the band's, you know, in free worship or something, and just sitting on the, on, on the G for ages, I can, you know, slide up to an octave yeah. and jam it out.
kind of going to be the second most used chord in any, any worship music. Um, and then again, you have your notes that are in the chord of C, which in this case are C, E, and G. And you got your octaves. Bit, bit more advanced improvisation um, could be you're looking at you know licks towards the end of song passages. So if you're going from if you're going from the verse into into a bigger chorus, say for example, you might want to say say you're on the verse and the last chord you're in the key of G and the last chord is a D. You could just go straight to the chorus to the G. And it's going to work fine. It's going to be great because it's the root note and you're not playing too much and it's complimenting everyone else. Um, another thing you could do is, um, if you're on the D and you're going into the chorus, there's a lot of different notes you could go to to kind of walk it into the G. So you could you could just stick to the notes that are in a D chord, and you could go. So I've just used the D and two different places of an F sharp, which are another note that's in the chord of the D. So if I'm back on the D again. If you're not on a note for long, you can pretty safely play any note that's in the key of the song you're in. So if I'm in the G, if I'm, in, I'm in the key of G, I could go, I could use that E, even though it's not a note from the chord that I'm currently in, and as just a passing note, it sounds it sounds fine. It's not going to be a problem. But if I sit on it, it's going to sound gross over the D. So it's all it's all about picking picking the notes that you want to put in. Yep. Before you play it, mm. it's it's no, it's no good playing a riff and hoping for the best. <laughs> because no, um, yeah. you, you, trial and error. You need to you need to know what short. you want to play before you play. Even if you plan it one beat in advance, You're like I want to go to the F sharp or I want to go to the G or I want to go to the A. It's good to know what you want to play before you play it, or it can kind of end up in a bit of a train wreck.